Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, working with university startups uh, with a lot of ambition to, to build on this theme of high growth clean tech companies. And to answer that question about is it possible to make money uh, doing this stuff, we think it is. And I'll talk a bit about how we've uh, sought to prove that over the last 10 and more years. So um, a bit more about IP Group. So um, I work as part of a, a larger organization called IP Group, uh, which is a listed company here in London on the main stock exchange. Um, and a way of describing what IP Group does is it focuses on uh, science tech, focuses on opportunities that arise mostly from university research that are based on novel scientific knowledge uh, and trying to commercialize those discoveries, find applications for them. Uh, which is obviously a subset of, of, of uh, startups uh, that's very specific to uh, that type of knowledge. And it brings both opportunities and challenges that, that we have developed to address specific um, uh, sort of mechanisms for. Um, the company is currently worth around a billion pounds of market capitalization. It's uh, 15 years old, and today we have just over 100 startups. So it's a relatively large investor in startups in the UK. Uh, and has had a reasonable amount of time learning how to uh, you know, do that well, making lots of mistakes, but also having quite a few successes. Uh, a, a, an important part of our model, and something that we often find people um, don't see as obvious, is that although we are well capitalized and quite large, our first investment in a company is always early stage. So I often get asked to come and join a know, 30 million pound Series B or something, uh, that's not our model. We always wanted to get in either at seed or Series A, those kind of two opportunities. And in cases where we're working directly with new university science, we're often investing almost pre-seed. We're building the company ourselves. So it's always an early stage start, uh, and that's a critical part of, of, our, of the IP group model. However, uh, we now have the resources to follow on. So we, we'll go through all the way through uh, Series A, B, C, IPO, and beyond. Uh, and there's a huge investment range. So the smallest investments that we do in some of those pre-seed, very early university um, opportunities can be 30,000 pounds. Our largest ever single investment, single ticket, was 40 million pounds. It's a very large range. For the 40 million, we went to the market and raised their money specifically for that, that investment. Um, so we're not constrained around capital size. It's much more about, about the opportunity. A critical feature of what IP Group does that's a bit different from a conventional sort of venture capital fund structure is this company um, structure. So it's an evergreen fund. Um, we, you know, our, our shares are traded on the stock exchange, and that source of capital doesn't have a natural end. So there's an evergreen opportunity, uh, and as we'll get into in a minute, in clean tech, that's incredibly important. Uh, there are timescales can be very long, and for us, we think that source of capital uh, from the public capital markets. Um, is, is very suitable, and actually Ben Goldsmith earlier is also raising capital on the London uh, public market. So we think that's quite interesting and relatively new. Um, we invest as an IP group across four sectors, so healthcare, biotech, and digital uh, materials, as well as clean tech. Um, we work with a large number of universities. Uh, we started in the UK, and we have 11 partners in the UK. Uh, you'll see some well-known institutions there, including Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, three years ago, we set up a U.S. business, so we now have a, an office on the East Coast and actually have just opened an office uh, on the West Coast as well, uh, and we're working with some well-known institutions there. You'll see Princeton, Penn, Columbia, but also from a clean tech point of view, some of the um, U.S. federal labs, for example, NREL, and for those of you who haven't been to NREL, if you're into, into clean tech and, and eco stuff, it's an amazing place to visit, uh, and we're very excited about that partnership. Uh, it, we don't stop at, at the US, and part of the reason for being here today is that we're very excited about working more in Europe, uh, and indeed also working in Asia. So, um, you know, watch this space for additional sort of growth in those two geographies. IP CleanTech itself is about 20% of IP Group, uh, and we've been one of the uh, most active um, sort of eco investors in the UK over the last uh, 13 years. Uh, we've invested a total of 64 million. Uh, into sort of more than 30 companies. Uh, so we've been doing this for a long time. Um, as has been referred to a couple of times already today, you know, we've made mistakes, we've learned a lot, uh, we've seen all sorts of um, risks, problems, and also opportunities. Uh, so a lot of experience in the team, 
uh, and a lot of companies have, that have gone through uh, our books. Uh, we've had four exits. The largest of those was Oxford Catalyst, and we're now called Velocis, uh, which has now moved to the US. Uh, and the current portfolio is 22 companies. So the total portfolio value is uh, 400 million pounds, reasonably substantial. Uh, we're sort of investing now fr from a, um, a capital base of around 70 or 80 million pounds. So um, from an early stage fund, we're quite large, uh, but we're seeking to grow. And we actually have a track record that uh, sets very ambitious targets. So our uh, since inception mark to market IRR is well over 20%. Uh, and we've managed to sustain that for, for quite a long time. Our, our investors, the shareholders and IP group, expect that growth to continue. So we have a very ambitious target. And in order to continue to grow the portfolio at that sort of rate, uh, this sort of international expansion, moving a bit beyond universities, is very important to us. And I'll, I'll mention, I mentioned that US opportunity. Uh, we've made our first investment now in an NREL spin-out. Uh, that was a fascinating process. Uh, the US federal labs are sort of their own special ecosystem, uh, and that was a very fundamental piece of um, sort of semiconductor solid state physics technology that, that we backed there. So we're starting to do that international thing, and, and more generally working, um, having an office in the US offers commercial opportunities for our existing portfolio. So we're, we're very excited about this international um, activity, and generally uh, this whole eco environment needs international collaboration. Here's a picture of the portfolio. I've stolen this uh, shamelessly from uh, Vinod Kozler. It's a nice sort of flower chart of the different areas that we, um, we invest in. I would say we're pretty broad. Um, because we're, to some extent, opportunity-driven, uh, we look at stuff coming out of, out of these university partners. Uh, we've got a broad set of different companies. Um, so we invest across uh, both supply and energy efficiency, also circular economy and resource efficiency and transport. To pick four areas that we're quite interested in the moment, um, like many people here today, we're very interested in distributed generation. It's a, it's a good fit for venture-style funding, so distributed off-grid renewables, distributed sort of gas-powered uh, generation is an interesting area for us. Um, we think uh, low-energy ICT is uh, going to be an exciting area, data centers, low-energy computing. Um, on resource efficiency, uh, we haven't made many investments yet, but agri-tech, broader agricultural supply chains, I think are very exciting and very important around climate change. And finally, on, on transport, um, our area focuses around battery systems, so not, not so much the battery chemistry, but actually system integration, system design, and intelligent management of battery systems. I'll give a couple of examples just to illustrate what we mean by the sort of companies that have been quite successful, and the first of those is Series Power. This is a spin-out from Imperial College London, uh, and it has a unique form of fuel cell. So as most of you know, fuel cells are, are fa fantastically unfashionable area of investment in clean tech. Um, they've been massively hyped in the mid noughties Our view is that that whole market is coming back, led by Asia. The largest markets for fuel cells in the world now are in Korea and Japan, it's starting to happen in um, the US as well. Uh, and Series Power has this unique steel uh, technology which offers a number of benefits uh, they are now working with a number of global multinationals. The ones that are in the public domain are Honda, Cummins, Nissan, and British Gas. Uh, and all of those large companies have spent a quite a lot of time evaluating the technology and are very excited about it. Uh, and that's been a long journey. So when I talk about this sort of patient capital 10-year timescale, Sirius was founded in 2001. We're 15 years in. It's had some ups and downs. And I think now the commercial opportunity is starting to, beca to become real. Uh, and we've sort of backed that with some real money. Uh, two weeks ago, we announced a £20 million fundraise for the company where we committed £6.6 .6 million. So we're really getting behind these companies at the point they've got that commercial validation. Our most valuable company at the moment in the portfolio is um, a really sort of fun, counterintuitive uh, area of uh, clothes washing. So this is possibly the most valuable uh, laundry tech startup ever. Uh, and it's out of the University of Leeds, uh, where they had a serendipitous discovery that um, you could use polymeric beads uh, to wash clothing. And we've since built this company out into quite a large entity, uh, selling particularly in the US, uh, and the technology offers fantastic water and energy savings for laundry, but it's also moving into leather processing as well. And, and leather tanning is a hugely environmentally damaging process today, and the company's working with Lanxis in Germany to 
to dramatically reduce the water and environmental footprints of, of leather tanning. But again, it's based on some science out of the University of Leeds uh, that we discovered and, and first invested in 2006. So takeaways from, from the presentation, um, we've had good performance. Uh, patient capital is a key part of that. Uh, and um, working with uh, research institutions or, or entities with really distinctive technology is the way we sort of do most of our deal flow. Um, London capital markets, despite Brexit, despite um, you know, something we think was a real shame for the UK, remain open uh, and a great place to source capital, both in Europe and for the US. Uh, and the final point to make is that you know, we, we've had this team of people in, in IP Group who have been working in clean tech for more than a decade. Uh, three of us are here today, so Jamie and Ben, put, put your hands up. Um, please come and say hello, and I look forward to talking to you um, throughout the day. Thanks very much. Robert, thank you very much. Which one is the most important, uh, best performing, most valuable company in your portfolio? Uh, best performing so far has been Xeros. Uh, it's worth 200 mil 215 million pounds, and three years ago it's worth 10. So it's, it's, done, it's done pretty well. Uh, Neil Woodford is a, quite a well-known fund manager. Uh, he's a huge backer of this company, uh, and he, we raised 40 million pounds for Xeros at the end of last year, and Neil Woodford was a, was a huge part of, of, of that, that funding round. So there. Do you actually think that the other investors are doing a bad job in being very close to universities and you get all the cool deal flow <laughs> on your own? It, it's, it's, it's just really hard. Uh, it, it, there are years where you have no real commercial signal. Uh, that's, the, that's the key problem, is not to pile in too much capital uh, before there's really a customer there. And when we start, there is no customer. There's, there's a hypothetical customer, but it's always the wrong one. Mm. And it's, de it's, dealing, it's dealing with that, <laughs> that uncertainty. <laughs> Telling the CEO that he's, you know, his projections are wrong uh, is, is the hard bit. Yeah, I think it's very important work eh, to be very close to the universities and you are doing a great job. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yes.